Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial, and in this video, we're gonna build this futuristic thermostat. And it's getting a little hot. Now the purpose of this video is to actually teach you about shape layers. I get lots of questions about shape layers. And so I want to, to kind of dive into shape layers and instead of just showing you, oh, here's a shape layer, I wanted to build something fun. And so this is what we're gonna be building in the end and it may not end up looking exactly like this because I'm just gonna be building it from scratch. I might do things a little bit differently, but it's gonna be somewhat similar. And I'm gonna show you how to do um, these different layers and gradients and all of this is besides these this text right here all of this is built with one shape layer which makes it easy if I want to scale everything as a whole if I want to add effects to it and things like that so let's start with a new composition let's put in a solid background so it's not just black okay so here's our background let's start with a shape layer now there's a couple of ways to create a shape layer. My favorite way is to make sure I have nothing selected in the timeline, and then come up here to the mask tool, and when there's nothing selected, the mask tool is now a shape tool. And I can come in here and just draw a shape. It creates a new shape layer, and I have all the controls. Now, if I don't want to do that, I can come up to Layer, New, add a new shape layer, and it's just an empty shape layer. There's nothing in it. And then I can come up here where it says add. I can add a group, a rectangle, an ellipse, a polystar, a path, all of these things to the shape layer. The problem with doing it this way is it's not going to add the fill and the stroke. If I add a rectangle, it adds just a blank rectangle. And then I need to come in here and add a fill, and it just takes longer that way. So my preferred way is to, again, just grab the mask tool when nothing is selected. And I want to do a circle. So I'll grab it. And if I hold down shift, it'll keep it nice and square. Now let me come in here and make sure it's centered. And inside of a shape layer, there's lots of places to get lost. It, there's a whole world inside of shape layers. So if I click on the layer, down here it says contents. And inside it says ellipse 1. And inside the ellipse 1, this is the group name, is the path the stroke, the fill, and the transform. But also if I look into the path, the path has its own position. The transform has its own position. And the transform for the layer has its own position. So I can move the layer, or I can move the group, or I can move the circle. So it gets really confusing. But when you create this uh, original ellipse, uh, the position in the ellipse path is going to be zeroed out, so that's fine. Um, but right here, this position is at 6.8 and 5.6, so I just want to zero that out as well. Make sure it's nice and centered. Okay, and I'm not going to worry about the transform for the layer itself. So here is an ellipse, and what I can do to this is I can change the fill color. I can also change the stroke, make it really wide. And what I want to do to create this thermostat is I actually want to get rid of the fill. So I'm going to just highlight that and delete it. And then let's increase the stroke. And what I want to do is I want to add a trim path to this. So I'm going to select my ellipse group. You know what, let's just rename this just so it's easier to know what it is because in here I can create other groups. So it's like pre-comping. I can have folders inside of this and it can get pretty complicated but you can also merge paths and when you do folders and groups and things like that, there's lots you can do. But just to be simple, let's go in here and now let's add a trim paths. And you'll see there's lots of different options, merge, offset, uh, pucker, bloat, repeater, round corners, and we want the trim paths. And what this is going to do is what it sounds like. It's going to trim it, and it looks like that. That's pretty cool. Now, what would happen if I do the trim paths when there's a fill? It actually looks different when I do that. So if I add a fill, this is now what the trim paths looks like. 
So not quite the same, but you can see what it's doing. You can see that this is where it's starting and that's where it's ending and it's just connecting the line across. So it's not like a radial wipe, but it kind of looks like a radial wipe when I don't have a fill. And you can actually make it look like a radial wipe by doing a little trick. If I come to the stroke, this is set at 114 now, but if I look at the ellipse path at 450, set the same stroke to 450, well then now it looks like a big circle and a radial wipe. As long as the stroke and the ellipse size is the same, it's going to look like that. But that's not what we're here to do. Let's make ourselves a thermostat from the future. So I want to set this trim pass in to 75 degrees. And I want to do the offset to minus 135 to make it look like that. Now I want to come down here to the stroke and there's this line cap. And I want to change that to round cap, make it a little nicer looking. And let's come in here and name this. I'm going to name this the case, the case that the whole thermostat is kind of going in. And then I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to name this track. And let's come in here and first let's just give it a different color so we can see what's going on. I'll probably change all these colors later or maybe I'll get it right the first time, who knows. And let's bring that down. Okay. And then let's duplicate this. Call that bar. And let's change the color to more of a white. Now I want to add a controller so that I can control the progress of this thermostat. So let's go to Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control. Now if we go into the bar, this is the one that I want to be moving. If I go into the Trim Pass, it's set at 75. So I want 75 to equal 100. So I'm going to do an expression here. So I'm going to hold down Alt and or Option on the keyboard, click on End, and then it brings up this expression box. I'm going to take the pick whip, grab the slider, and since I wanted to top out at 75%, I'm going to do times 0.75. And then now when I bring this slider from 0 to 100, you can see it's starting to look like our example. Now let's zoom in a little bit and kind of make this look a little bit nicer. So what I want to do is let's first take this white bar and let's give it a gradient. So make sure I have the bar selected. And I'm going to add a gradient stroke. Now remember, this is just a stroke. I had deleted the fill, so not a gradient fill, but a gradient stroke. I'm actually going to turn this stroke off. Let's take this gradient stroke. Actually, we got to check this one. This one's set at 49. And we want this stroke to be the same. So 49. Make sure that we're using the round cap as well. And let's change it from linear to radial. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that this radial, the endpoint, is right in the right spot. So I'm going to bring it just right, right here. It's kind of hard to see. Right to the end, the side of the stroke. And it doesn't look like there's a gradient there, but there really is. You can kind of see it. But what I can do is I can come into this edit gradient and I can move things around. So there's that. And let's maybe take this gray, this black. So what I want to make it look like is it's dark right here on this edge and also on the other edge. So what I'm going to do is bring this white over here and then bring in another point. So if you just click down here, it'll create a, a color. And so you can have multicolor gradients. And I'm going to take this one on the far left, make it black, white in the middle. Let's make this one black again. And then I'm going to just adjust this gradient until right there. You can see as I moved it over, it's 
coming right on the edge. And then I want to make sure there's a little bit of a feather. And, and there we go. That's kind of cool looking. It's a little bit intense, so I can come down to this opacity and bring it down. Okay. Also, what I can do is if I want it, I can change the stroke color. So let's say we want this a red. And then I come up to the gradient stroke and change the overlay to multiply. And it's going to add that gradient right to that red. Let's maybe change this color. Red's a little bit too intense. Let's go green. That looks pretty good. So there is the first gradient. Now let's go in and add a little bit more to this. So I'm going to take this track and I'm actually going to lighten it up a little bit. And then let's duplicate this, bring it underneath the track. And I'm going to call this track stroke. Now remember, since we don't have a fill, this is all built with the stroke. I can't add a stroke to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, just change the color of this, set it to black, and then make it bigger. And what it's going to do is it's going to peek out from behind. Maybe I don't want it pure black. Let's just do dark gray. Just enough to see that it's there. Now, so let's add a, to the case, let's add a gradient stroke. And I'm going to just do something similar. So let's go in and make sure the stroke is the same width. This one was 114. Let's change this to radial. And let's make sure that the edge, the end point, is right on the edge. Let's come in to edit this gradient. And let's just give it a nice kind of a beveled edge. And maybe we'll do it on both sides. Remember how we did that? We brought in the white. And then we brought in another color. So I just clicked here, brought up another point. Let's bring in the black. Now we've got kind of a nice curved edge to that. Now, again, we need to come down to the line cap and make sure it's set to round. And then let's maybe take this opacity down just a little bit. Okay, so there's our basic first part. And I can even come in here and say I wanted more of a hard edge around this. I can take this case again. Let's duplicate that. Same thing I did. Let's call this stroke. Delete that stroke, the gradient stroke, and turn this one dark gray. And let's bring it up a little bit to give it a tiny bit of an edge. So that's the, the main part. Now let's build the middle. So the middle is a circle. If we look at our example, a circle with a kind of a dial readout in the middle. So let's grab our circle tool. Make sure we have a circle right in the middle. Let's call this our readout. And what I'm actually going to do is actually let's call this circle and then go to my contents I'm going to add a group call this readout bring it to the top put the circle in that group let's so hit contents again add another group we call this the bar grow Let's bring that right next to readout and let's take all of these and stick it in there. So now I've got them kind of, you can see they're in groups here and I can turn them on and off in one go, which is kind of nice. So let's take this circle, go into the transform, make sure it's zeroed out for the position. Let's take this fill. First thing we need to do is change this color. Okay. 
Now with this, since it's a filled circle, I can come in here and add a gradient fill instead of a gradient stroke. So let's come in this, let's again set this to radial. I'm dealing with circles here. Make sure my endpoint is right where I need it to be. And let's go in to edit this gradient. I want to add another point because I want to kind of create a bevel. And it's hard to create a bevel right when you have just one point. So I added another point. Let's take this black, and I want this to not be black. Let's do kind of a gray. Add a little bit of a gradient to it. And let's take the middle and make it just a little bit darker. And that's kind of what we're going for. So let's take this readout, make sure it's selected. And I'm going to come up to my shape tool, add a rectangle. Put it in that group right above the circle. Let's take the fill, make it a little bit darker. Maybe kind of a hint of green to it. Go to the transform, make sure it's zeroed out. And then keep the stroke on it, and it looks like it's indented there. That's pretty cool looking. So now let's just add, the last part is to add the text. And this is the only thing that's not done in this one shape layer. So before we go in and add the text, I just wanted to go over shape layers really quickly. Again, um, this is what we have here. Again, we've got groups, lots of cool stuff in groups. Um, and I can come in and turn this on and off in one go. That's really nice. Also, groups have their own transform. So if I wanted to scale this, I can do that. I can skew it and rotate it. So groups have their own transform. So groups are really a great way to kind of organize yourself in shape layers. So that's just a quick overview. Now let's go ahead and finish this off. Let's put some text in this. So I'm going to grab my text tool. And let's just type 100, a little large. Bring this down. And center that out. Now what I want to do is go into this shape layer, but go into the effects and the slider control. Right? I want to connect the text to that slider control. So then I'm going to go to the text. I'm going to option click on the stopwatch on source text. And I'm going to pick whip the slider control. And then what you're going to see is it's going to do some crazy numbers. I don't want it to look like that. I want it to round everything off just to whole numbers. And so how do you do that is I'm going to come into this expression. Go to the beginning. Type capital M math dot floor open parenthesis go to the end I just hit down on the keyboard and it went to the end close parenthesis and then now what that's going to do it's going to keep it nice whole numbers so that is how to create a futuristic futuristic thermostat looks pretty cool so I hope you enjoyed this lesson about shape layers if you have any questions feel free to ask me. Just put them down in the comments below. Um, I will love to get to them, and hopefully it's something I can answer. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I put out new tutorials every week, actually two of them. So there's new tutorials on Fridays and then a quick tip on Wednesdays. So you'll want to subscribe because there's lots of great content. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.